Welcome back to Okaloosa today out here on beautiful Okaloosa Island. I'm Doug Rayner with the city of Destin and we're actually on location on Okaloosa Island at the future home of uh, Veterans Park that's coming soon. And um, joining me right now with the city of Destin is Ken Galander, our community development director, and Steve Schmidt, our public services director, a couple of guys that are on this show a lot to talk about a lot of city projects. And this time we're gonna be talking about stormwater and uh, pollution and stormwater runoff in the city of Destin, something we've seen through the summer rains and things like that. Hopefully we'll get into a time period right now where we don't have a lot of heavy rain, but um, this is important to our residents, important to our citizens to understand how important stormwater drainage, preparation, and, and those kinds of things are to our city. So guys, thanks for being here. Hey Doug, Thank, glad um, to be here. And if, let's just kind of get started a little bit right now on the uh, on the effects of stormwater on a city. And, and, and just so you know, uh, Ken is in our planning and building department, Steve with public services. So, so these are two different sides of, uh, of, of stormwater. We have the planning side and we have the maintenance and, and the uh, construction. But let's talk about why this is so important to our city. Ken, give us a little overview of that. <clears throat> well, there's really two main points that we strive both of our departments are in the cities just working towards and that's to reduce the pollution aspects of stormwater runoff and then there's the flooding part so it's a water quality and a water quantity aspect of it and from the community development side of it we concentrate a lot on supporting the private side of development every development has to ensure that they manage the stormwater runoff on their property and we have certain uh, applicable codes and regulations that address that. And then Steve's department ensures that there's the, the public aspect of it. That's right, Steve. So so the public, and, and just to discern the difference, the public is rights of ways and things like that, right? That's right. Um, and, and, you know, rights of way really, in many cases, goes back further into people's yards than they, they realize. And uh, uh, typically it's behind the sidewalk and even behind the, the uh, uh, power poles and, and uh, water meters. Right, and that's that's the city's responsibility, and we're going to also talk a little bit about citizens' responsibilities as well about keeping these things up. And the other side of the public thing, uh, the public aspect is uh, our roads and, and the stormwater maintenance facilities too that we'll we'll get into. Um, Ken, you you mentioned your department's job in in making plans and things like that. Talk right. about talk about the importance of a good plan and, and I know that there's some things that our residents like to hear with insurance dollars and stuff right. like that. Uh, one of the again one of the aspects of what we're looking towards uh, improving upon is the reduction in flooding and that's by well, through implementation of a stormwater management plan both from the citywide perspective and the private side is through implementing that we benefit through reduced flood insurance rates and in combination with all of that the city most recently has been able to achieve a 20 percent reduction in federally subsidized insurance rates for the city of Destin residents in dollars that actually equates to approximately a half a million dollars a year that our residents uh, receive uh, uh, from the implementation of a good stormwater management plan and through certain uh, construction standards that improve upon reducing the flood damage associated with rising water or water moving through uh, through the community. So that's a significant aspect of it. Right. Uh, Steve, tell us a little bit about the, the, the biggest problem areas we have. You know, we have a plan that Steve's or uh, that Ken's guys work on. What about the what about the areas in the city that, that are the most problematic? Where, where do we concentrate? Well, we have we have a number of areas around the city where we have some challenges uh, and, and some of them are due uh, to just being really low. And in fact, uh, the Heritage Run subdivision area uh, in, in Destin has a, an average elevation of four or five feet. Uh, so they have a very high, you know, very water table very close to the surface, uh, and it's very difficult to get water out of there. And, and uh, uh, one of the major projects that we've done recently to help to help alleviate that situation is uh, is the installation of a tide flex valve, which will let the water run out but not let tidal water come back in. Um, another area that we have some some issues uh, is is Indian Bayou. Indian Bayou, when you look at the the original plans, had uh, had stormwater swells in the right of way throughout the project. Uh, over the years, 
um, by accident or design, most of those stormwater swales have gone away. And in fact, in some cases now, you've got right of way that's mounded up and actually uh, it's formed a, a, a turf curb along the, the edge of the, of the ribbon curb and it just directs water on down to the lowest point. So at some of the lower points in, in, uh, in Indian Bayou, we have some, some drainage problems. And there's some areas along uh, Indian Trail where we have some low areas and some drainage problems as well. Very good, and this is something that we need to make sure everybody understands. It's a very, it's a very uh, comprehensive effort. It's not just our public services department, not just our planning department. It's, it's residents, it's businesses in town who have to work together to keep this, to keep this up, and, and make sure that everything flows to where it's supposed to flow. Because where we're living, there's very little places for it to go. You know, it's, it's if it's not done correctly, it's going to be in somebody's yard. Yeah, and it, or in the aspect of the pollution, if the runoff does not utilize the systems that have been put in place or historically have been needed there where does that water go but into our bays bayous gulf and that's where we don't want those contaminants that are usually on those impervious surfaces the driveways the streets the motor oil the pesticides the fertilizers those kind of things that we don't want to get into our water bodies which right. will contaminate them yeah we don't want that domino effect of, of, of poorly managed stormwater facilities to, to it just it goes down the line of affecting a lot of other things. Yeah we, we actually get uh, you know we, we have water quality samples that are taken around the city and sometimes those water quality samples aren't that great and, and might uh, have high levels of fecal col coliform that sort of thing and those uh, those basically uh, are mostly caused by runoff into into stormwater systems that drain directly into the into the bays and bayous and waterways so uh, you know if we can uh, if we can take care of some of the water quality issues by, by handling the first flush and letting some of that basically perk into the ground before it pops off into the inlet and goes out into the waterway, uh, that definitely helps our, our water quality, uh, not just in the bayous and the harbor, but also in the bay. All right, and um, Ken, let's, let's go back to our plan a little bit. We've got the, uh, the, the stormwater management plan and then we have the, the flood plans here in the city. When you put these things together, who does the city work with? It's not just this dust and design in this. There are standards that you work work through and other agencies, right? Right. Um, when it comes to the citywide stormwater management plan, which is, I believe, been in existence for just over 10 years probably, mm -hmm. which is in need of updating because Steve's department has worked very diligently over the last several years to implement a lot of the fixes that that plan identified. And then when you have the private development, uh, what they do is we rely on uh, permitting from the Northwest Florida Water Management District, uh, which is in conjunction with DEP, their standards from the state level and even the federal level. Uh, we have the National Pollution Discharge Elimination System. An Say acronym that for, three times yeah, fast. Exactly. Huh? <laughs> the NPDES. Yeah, yeah. And that's something that another aspect of where Steve's department helps, and it's a conjunction. Uh, with our two departments to ensure that we're in compliance with that federal and state standards. And then our city regulations play off of that. You know, certain stormwater uh, rain events, you know, 25 year, 24 hour storm event, those kind of things. And then we also just have to think about what appropriate regulations that we need to implement or have in place or review. Because yes, we know that the Destin is sandy soil and you have to necessarily have the deep swales and things like that. So it's through uh, evaluation, planning, studying to come up with the best approach to manage the stormwater, but it has to be in place to ensure that that flooding doesn't occur. And we're talking about the significant flooding. You might have some nuisance flooding that affects your around your property and stays within the swales and those areas, but those drain quickly. And that's what you want. And that's what we want. Those swales are to hold water, to manage the system, and it's a system. Those swales interact with one another, and it's a university applied uh, aspect of managing the flooding and uh, water quality. Well, you brought up a good point just a minute ago about you know trying to make this work for the city, and, and um, we're an established coastal city, but have only been in existence for about 30 years. So. You know, there's got to be a lot of challenges. A lot of what you're seeing, Steve, when you guys go in and tear up a road to put something in is, is outdated, ins un or uns insufficient uh, materials and stormwater facilities. Kind of walk us through a little bit of what you guys see when you go into a road. 
Well, we, we actually inherited a lot of old infrastructure and, and uh, you know, really the, the newer uh, plastic pipes and stuff really weren't, haven't been around that long. Some of those have only been around for, you know, 15 to 20 years. Um, you know, we'll get into, we'll get into some, some issues where we've seen s some uh, subsidence of the soil and, and we'll dig it up and find that, uh, uh, that we've got some, some really old, either uh, just un un uh, uncoated corrugated metal pipes that are rusted through. In some cases, even with concrete pipes, we get uh, we get joint separations and, and grout around the joints is deteriorated. And so we've got a lot of issues that we have to deal with around the city in terms of repairing existing infrastructure. And some of the ones we've seen over the last couple of years were in, were in Mountain Drive where you guys redid the road but went in and put in a new stormwater maintenance system um, in Melvin Street, which was a severely flooded area when it rained even just a little bit. So, so you guys go down and you, and you, you rework all of that. Yeah, we were fortunate uh, with those projects that th we had a significant difference between the water table and the, and the road elevation. So we were able to go in under Mountain Drive and put in uh, some fairly large uh, stormwater chambers. And uh, the same with, with Melvin Street. We went in there and put in some chambers and, uh, and actually totally uh, uh, ended our, our problems there. We, we had a business there that was occasionally getting flooded and, uh, and since, since we put the chambers in Melvin uh, we've had several heavy rains and, and uh, have, have not had any problems whatsoever. So those actually have worked out really well but they don't work in every situation. In a lot of areas around the city where you don't have that, that significant difference between the, the groundwater elevation and the surface uh, there's not room for chambers or, or exfiltration pipes in many cases. And you are, you, you guys have worked really hard at, at retrofitting all of that we have to make it up up to up to code as far as how things work. And then, can you guys have a have a job to to plan around something that's already been built? It's just it's right. got to be a challenge. And I know that what's important is a lot of awareness, you know, for our businesses and our residents to understand just how important this is from a plans perspective. Um, why would we? Why would our residents really need to understand what you guys are doing over in the planning department? Well, it boils down to once again is your quality of life, the environment that we're living in. And if we don't understand where resources need to be devoted to by updating the citywide stormwater plan and utilizing the proper tools to manage the water quality and, uh, and quantity, uh, it's just going to affect everybody. And you know, through our website, our new website that we've created, we've uploaded some helpful brochures, I guess is how we're referencing That's them. Right. And it's through just helping the public understand uh, what it means to, you know, point source pollution or non-point source pollution. You know, don't dump your oil, motor oil down the, <laughs> the, the stormwater drain or don't over fertilize or uh, apply too much pesticide, uh, washing your car properly, even pet waste. Steve mentioned the fecal coliform and things like that that can negatively affect and you understand through planning what you're anticipating and what resources you need for the future right. and that's what we're trying to do. And people need to understand that things that go into the stormwater drain at that point in many cases it drains directly to the bayou that they live next to or into the bay. Uh, and, and so there's no, there's no treatment after that point in, in most cases. So, uh, so it's, it's very important to, to understand that and not, you know, and not try to take whatever steps you can to make sure that pollutants don't get in there. Right. Another thing uh, that, that people often don't understand is that when you have a, a, a problem with a low-lying property, it, many people look at it and says, well, he's got a problem, but really it's a community problem. It's because in many cases that's, that subdivision has been designed with, with roadside swales that take some of the water upstream, up the hill, so that it doesn't get to that, that guy at the bottom of the hill. And, the key uh, term, I think, is a system. It's a system. Yeah. So there's things in place that have to be established and maintained, and it's a responsibility of the city and it's a responsibility of the property owner to make sure all those things are in place. That's a very good point you both made is that the, the moral of this story is that there's a very big picture here and every little thing plays a very big part in it. Down from, from city facilities all the way to private facilities and that's the last thing we want to talk about. Steve you're kind of the expert on this is our uh, what, what can a private citizen do 
to help alleviate stormwater problems in their neighborhood on their property, what can they do to fix that, or what can they do to help that? Well, the, the biggest thing they can do. We have a fly over here. We ordered just a little while sound ago. Of, sound of freedom. <laughs> um, the biggest thing we, they can do really is help us maintain uh, existing swells or reintroduce swells that that used to be there that got filled in. And sometimes, sometimes it's as simple as just filled in by blowing sand. Uh, sometimes people uh, try to. Uh, basically treat their uh, their their sodded yards or uh, you know their St. Augustine grass by spreading sand and what they're doing is they're actually raising the, the level of the ground and and reducing the effectiveness of the swell so so uh, reintroducing or maintaining those swells can, can go a long way towards helping keep uh, problems from you know from occurring in the neighborhood we did a, a study one time recently just a sort of a thumbnail study in, in Indian Bayou uh, where we had a drainage basin of about 33 houses and most of them didn't have swales and we ran the calculations as to how much water we'd store if they had swales and you know very simple swales uh, as originally designed for that for that subdivision and that in those three 33 houses came up with a, an amount of about 78,000 gallons of water which is wow. like the equivalent of five and a half swimming pools so five and a half average size swimming pools and if you think about the the impact of dumping five and a half swimming pools out in front of your yard you know then that's that's what it, it's a it's a very simple concept and people look at the swales and say well I can't store much it's cumulatively it can store an awful lot and as that's a system it's a, right. as a system and it, and it really can save that person at the bottom of the hill a lot of angst and, and possible property damage All right so the next time somebody sees water puddling up in their neighborhood they might think you know if it just because it's not in your yard maybe if you had your swale in place some would alleviate from another area put into put it into your swale and move it on down so it's not backing up in right. the low-lying areas that's right you know we Luckily, or we have an example of where we worked with a small area in the Crystal Beach area. And we had some, uh, it was flooding, it was more the nuisance type, but we worked with, informed the neighbors, and worked over a significant amount of time, but the result was the swales were put in and we're not seeing the effects of that type of flooding there anymore. And it was through the effort of informing them about the needs for it and just working working those issues out and we, we received compliance and we're getting uh, a good result. Well, that's, and, and uh, there's a lot of awareness involved in this. Just understanding that there's a problem. You see a puddle, it's not my problem, but if, if, if everybody works together, it might alleviate a lot of that. Um, we're just about out of time, but I want to thank you both for being here and want to remind everybody that if you ever have a question about a swale in your yard or rights of way improvements, things like that, stormwater issues, call the Community Development Department, 837-4242, or call the Public Services Department, 837-4242. That goes to City Hall. They'll get you where you need to go. We have great staff that work on this stuff all the time. And uh, we just really appreciate the, the work you guys do to make sure our city's clean and healthy. Thank you, Doug. Thanks, guys. I have one more thing I want to let you know about before we go, and that is the uh, city's craft show, annual craft show, is on November the 16th and 17th at the Community Center. So be sure to check that out. Give the uh, Community Center a call if you'd like to be a vendor there, or if you'd just like to come and check it out. It's free admission. There are, is a charge for vendor space. Again, the Community Craft Show, November 16th and 17th at the Community Center. And if you have any questions, please call City Hall at 837-4242. Check out our new website, cityofdestin.com. A lot of good information there can help you get anything you need to know. I want to thank these guys one more time for being here and uh, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for Ted Corcoran and the city of Fort Walton Beach. Mm -hmm.